Good day grade 11s. In the last lesson, Sal explained to you how to derive the ideal gas equation. Now, it was just really a lesson to give you a feel for how the ideal gas equation came about, but you guys are lucky in the sense that you will never have to do that in your exams. But what you do need to do is be, you need to be able to do is to use it. So in this lesson, we're going to go through a couple of examples. So using the ideal gas equation. First of all, the ideal gas equation, which gives you, is given to you on the formula, says PV equals NRT. Now, what's important about this is the units. They are essential. Okay, so P is pressure, and it must be in pascals. V is volume, and it must be in cubic meters. Now, please understand that that's very special because 90% of the time when we talk volume, we talk decimeters cubed. But in this case, it has to be in cubic meters. T is temperature, and as we always know when it comes to gas laws, it must be in Kelvin. And N is your number of moles, and R is a universal gas constant which is equal to 8.31 joules per Kelvin per mole. And that's given to you, so you don't have to stress about that too much. Right, so let's look at a couple of examples and apply our knowledge to this equation to solve for them. Okay, so it says two moles of oxygen gas occupy a volume of 25 decimeters cubed at a temperature of 40 degrees Celsius. Calculate the pressure of the gas under these conditions. So the very first thing that we're going to do is we're going to write down our variables P, V, N, R, T. We know that R is 8.31, so life is cool. Okay, they tell us the pressure. Actually, the pressure is what we want. Okay, they tell us the volume is 25 decimeters cubed. The number of moles is 2 and the temperature is 40 degrees Celsius. But remember that there are a couple of things we need to change here. First of all, volume has to be measured in what? It has to be in cubic meters and temperature has to be in Kelvin. So we need to convert that. So let's do it on the right hand side here. To get from decimeters cubed to cubic meters, we're going to divide by a thousand. Okay, so we're going to go 25 divide by a thousand which is going to give us 0, 0, 0.25 cubic meters okay so therefore this is 0, 0, 0.25 cubic meters nice and easy right Kelvin to get from degrees Celsius to Kelvin what do we have to do we have to add 273 so that becomes a 3 and then a 7 and a 4 is 11. I don't know why there's a comma there. So let's try again. 3, 7 and 4 is 11, carry 1, that's 313 Kelvin. Now all we have to do is substitute these into our ideal gas law, which is PV equals NRT. We want P, so we're solving for P, so we're going to leave P by itself, and we're going to go NRT over the volume. Okay, nice and easy. So therefore, the number of moles is 2. The universal gas constant is 8.31. The temperature is 313. And we know that the volume is going to be 0, 0, 0.025. And now what do we do? We get out our calculators. Okay, and we say, right, let's see what we got. We've got 2 times 8.3, oopsie, let me go back, 0.31 times 313 equals 5202.06 divided by 0.025 and that gives us 208082.4. 208082.4 2.4 and remember that is in pascals and if you want to change it to kilopascals you can always divide by a thousand so that's going to be 208,08 kilopascals okay not too difficult hey so using the ideal gas law is actually pretty easy let's do just one more example to make sure you understand it says carbon dioxide gas is produced as a result of a reaction between calcium carbonate and hydrochloric acid. Okay, thank you for sharing. The gas that is produced is collected in a container of unknown volume. Hmm. 
The pressure of the gas is 105 kilopascals. The temperature is 20 degrees Celsius and the number of moles of gas is 0.86 and they're asking you what is the volume and we kind of expected that from that unknown volume thing. So again let's write down all our variables P, V, N, R, T. This time we know the pressure is 105 kilopascals. The volume is what we want. The number of moles is 0.86, R is still 8.31, and the temperature in this case is 20 degrees Celsius. And remember, what do we have to do? We have to convert the P and we have to convert the temperature. So this one's pretty easy because we're going from kilopascals to pascals, so we're just going to times it by 1,000. So it's going to be 105,000 pascals. N is fine, R is fine, this we have to add 273 which becomes 293 Kelvin. Okay, pretty easy, right? So then we get PV equals NRT, right? So we want to solve this time for volume, so we're going to leave volume on this side. We go V is equal to NRT over P, right? The number of moles they gave us was 0.86 times by the constant 8.31. Temperature is 293 all over the pressure, which is 105,000. Okay, and again we get out our calculator and we go, let's clear this, shall we? And we go 0.86 times 8.31. 0.31 times 2.93 equals divided by 105123, which gives us 1.99 times 10 to the minus 4, 1.99 times 10 to the negative 4 cubic meters. Now remember that the volume is always measured in cubic meters when we're using the ideal gas equation. And that grade 11 is how easy it is to use the ideal gas equation. So please make sure you know it. The most important thing about the ideal gas equation is this. These units here, that the pressure is in pascals, the volumes in cubic meters, temperatures in Kelvin, and obviously number of nulls is just numbers, so it's fine. But if you don't get those units right, you're going to get your equation wrong, you're going to get your sum wrong and your answer will be wrong. So please make sure you know that. And then go do the assessment at the end of the section and make sure you can do all the questions. Have a great day.